Welcome back to the Money Show here on Arise News. Hundreds, possibly thousands of Nigerians have been besieged, attacked in their houses and mowed down in the middle of the night by marauders in southern Kaduna, the predominantly Christian section of the state. Sadly, the attackers have been encouraged to visit such mayhem on the area time and time again, owing to what security experts say could either be unwillingness of or lack of capacity by the Nigerian military to establish a consistent presence and provide protection for the people. The governor there, Governor Nasir al rufai says it's all down to a land grab conflict in Zango Kataf, a town in southern Kaduna, but other stakeholders from all parts of Nigeria have taken its position with a pinch of salt. And so where lies the truth? And what could be the worst case scenario if nothing is done to rein in the violence and ensure reconciliation. One aspect of that argument, we're now being joined here by Stephen Adebite, the Methodist Bishop of Ikeja and Director of National Issues, Christian Association of Nigeria. Bishop Adebite, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show. Good morning. Good morning, you're welcome. Well, thank you. the Christian Association of Nigeria has stated its position on the issue of uh, the attacks, the perennial attacks uh, in, uh, Zand uh, in southern Kaduna, from Zango Kataf to Kafanchan to Kauru to all the other areas. Uh, the position of the Christian Association of Nigeria, if I understand it correctly, is that this is a, a case of a terrorist posing as herdsmen, attacking the people. But the governor uh, of uh, Kaduna State reacting to recent attacks in the month of July, June and July, in that uh, part of the country, says, well, what happened in Zango Kataf was an issue of conflict over farmland, uh, which then uh, became, uh, which escalated from uh, community to community. What exactly is the truth from the uh, perspective of the CA, uh, Christian Association of Nigeria and, uh, you know, what has been learned after that initial disagreement? Thank you very much. First and foremost, we must know that God has commanded that life belongs to him and no other person has the right to take another man's life. But what we are witnessing in southern Kaduna and other places in our country today is very, very devastating, unbelievable. And the Christian community in Nigeria is saying capital no to terrorism and to killing of Christians while they are sleeping, wherever they may be. And the government of Nigeria has not been able to provide the needed security to ensure that our people are not being killed just anyhow. And that is why we have come out to resist that vehemently and to let the world know that genocide is going on in Kaduna, Southern Kaduna and other places. Even in Kogi yesterday, many people were in church and 14 were shot dead by these uh, terrible human beings who are animals. So the Christian Association of Nigeria has come out to say to the world that we are saying that the Nigerian government have failed and the governor of Kaduna State have also failed in their responsibility to protect life and uh, properties, which is what they promised to do when they took uh, power and they said they would deliver and there would be a change. But nobody has seen that as that now. And people are dying, people are crying, and we are not happy with it and we cannot continue to keep quiet. We continue to say it to the world that this must stop immediately. Otherwise, the two of them should let the world know that they are not capable to be our leaders and they should give it to people who can manage the country and security of our country and of our people. Well, the military in responding to this latest uh, deadly violence has said, they will re-strategize and they will, you know, deploy more troops to shorten response time uh, when they are needed. Are you reassured by these promises? We are not, because they are promised many times and they have failed. If the military cannot protect our people, if they cannot guide our country, there's nothing they want to promise us at this time that we are going to take uh, seriously with them. We cannot take them for anything that they want to say at this time. People are dying by the day. You are telling us you want to re-strategize. What are they re-strategizing? What is the duty of the military if they cannot protect life and properties of our uh, uh, people? 
We don't know what they are doing. So we don't have trust in whatever they are saying. They are just using propaganda. They want to re-strategize by bringing Boko Haram, saying that they want to, they have rehabilitated them and taking them back to the military. Why is that done in the world? Somebody who has killed other people, somebody who has made other people, somebody who has terrorized other people, you now bring them back to the society and you have taken them into the military. It is unheard. It is unbelievable. And it has to be condemned in its entirety. And Nigerians are saying no to such acts by the government and by the military. You cannot bring criminals back to the society and say you have uh, done whatever with them and you now give them guns again to begin to kill more or what? We are not satisfied with the strategy that has been adopted by bringing terrorists back to us and giving them guns to now become military that will protect who? That's but but the military never said that the de-radicalized and reintegrated uh, repentant Boko Haram members were now being uh, employed into the Nigerian uh, military. Uh, that's not confirmed anywhere. In fact, they have denied it. But if you say that you do not trust uh, the military to protect the people, uh, if you say you do not trust the governor or the government of Kaduna State, are you then saying that people should resort to self-help? We should... What we are saying is that they must be proactive. We want to see results, not just promising us they will do this, they will do that. We are not seeing results. People are dying every minute. People are dying every moment. What they must do has to be done. And we want to see the results of what they want to do. So it is not a matter of saying they want to re-strategize at this time. The strategy they have adopted before have failed. Which new thing do they want to do? The Christian community is saying enough is enough. And we want to see what they want to do within a very short time. And we want our people to be protected. We don't want to bury our children again. We don't want to bury our wives again. And we don't want to bury our pastors again. Enough is enough. Okay, the word result is a very big word. What, what would you mean? Can you break it down for me? What, what, what would be results to you? Uh, that's number one. And number two, what will give you assurances? And I ask that for a specific reason, because there have been reactions as a result of this and stead warnings here and there. Well, what would be the result is for us to have a better environment. What the assurance we need is for them to stop the killings. The moment there is no more killings of our people, the moment we can move freely, the moment we can worship God the way we used to, and nobody is embarrassing us, nobody is harassing us, and nobody is killing our children when they are sleeping, nobody is killing our wife when they are sleeping, nobody is sleeping with them forcefully, then we can know that we are in a country. But in a place where you cannot sleep, you cannot move freely, you cannot even worship. They shot 14 people two days ago in uh, Kogi State. Why worshiping God? What type of society are we? What type of government do we have? The government have failed us, and they must show to the world that, yes, they are in charge of what they're supposed to do to this country and to the citizenry. So that is what we expect. Bishop, in the course of this uh, conversation, you use the word genocide. We, we didn't use genocide here. Uh, then you talked about our people. And then you talked about the attack on the church and, or in Kogi uh, twice. Now... What that uh, draws my attention to is the uh, allegation by religious freedom groups and even the uh, Global uh, Christian uh, Solidarity Network that there is genocide in Nigeria, um, which uh, could have uh, both religious and ethnic coloration. Are you saying that this is a case of uh, genocide against Nigerian Christians and also against certain uh, ethnic groups? Although the government of Nigeria uh, denies that and says, look, even Muslims are involved as casualties in these attacks in uh, parts of the north, uh, part of uh, central Nigeria. Uh, well, for us uh, in Christendom, it is genocide that is going on in southern Kaduna at the moment. If you go through the statistics of people that have been killed and maimed in southern Kaduna, you will agree with me that it is 90% Christian because Southern Kaduna is predominantly Christian community, and they have been eliminated every day, every moment, every minute. So if anybody is saying it's not genocide, the person is not being sincere. 
Christian is saying to the world today and always, genocide is going on in Kaduna, and we stand by that what has been pronounced by the president of Khan in Nigeria. And that is what we are saying. Because when we bury people every day, when we bury them for no just cause, not because of their own fault, but because they are Christian and they are being killed and maimed in their sleep, it is genocide. And there is no other word for it. And the Nigeria government must come to terms with that and they must stand up to their responsibilities. So we are not going to change those, that word and we stand by it. Well, there have been several attempts, you know, to curb... Uh, this deadly violence at different times. In fact, at one time, the state government was willing to pay, uh, you know, for, for the crisis to stop. Uh, the security agencies have also at different times tried to set up, you know, mini camps of, you know, response teams. But all this seems to have defied all solutions. Why do you think this is so? And what is the level of engagement between the Christian Association of Nigeria, the Muslim counterparts, uh, the government and security agencies? Does it even exist? Well, it, it does exist, but what we are seeing in Kaduna today is that the governor of Kaduna State has not been able to provide that enabling environment. We don't have problem with Muslim. We in Tarad, we have NIREC. I'm a member of the national body of NIREC, and we meet, we talk, but whatever we say at that level, hence in the, in, in, in the, in the room, it does not translate to what we witness every day on the streets. What is happening in Kaduna is that there must be a genuine intention from the governor of Kaduna to ensure that lives and properties are protected. We don't have problem with Muslims in Kaduna, but we have problem with the government architecture and the way they are managing it in Kaduna. We cannot continue to see them and say they are doing this, they are doing that, but every day, every night, they go about killing our people. And when they do it, you will agree with me. For you to kill about 20, 40 people, it is not something that happened just within one minute. But they will have done it, they will have gone. Nobody will be apprehended, nobody will be arrested, nobody will be prosecuted. And you will tell us there is a government. What type of government is that? What type of government are we running? What type of governor is not able to protect his own state? So whatever they want to do, we don't know about it. That is their own responsibility. They must protect lives and property of our people. And we want to see them to be alive. We want to see them to have their children. We want to see them to be protected. We want to see them to be secured. We want to see them that nothing happens to them. And they are able to worship God the way they should worship. And the governor of Kaduna and other security agents must work together in tandem and ensure that the genocide going on in southern Kaduna is stopped forthwith. Genocide. Who is perpetrating this genocide? Well, we cannot identify the people that are behind that for now. It's government that should be able to explain to us why our people are being maimed and killed every time. You agree with me that before now, if you go to Kaduna, Kaduna used to be very peaceful. But when and how did we get to the level we are at this moment? We cannot explain and we don't understand. And why people should believe some ethnic uh, group or people of one faith should be eliminated from that state, we don't understand. And that is why we are raising the question every time. And until we get a satisfactory answer, and until the killings of our people stop, we will not stop talking about it. Because they are part of the body of Christ, and we pray for them every day, and they have to be protected. So whoever is behind it has to come out, and they have to find them, and they must be apprehended, they okay. must be prosecuted. Okay, there are also issues of land disputes. And if we truly look back in this country, we've had many land fights. You know, we've got, we've got uh, Umunede and uh, the other village in Igbo land back in- Umuleri Aguleri. Umuleri Aguleri uh, land disputes. We've, we've had many land disputes in this country. And they were really, really big fights. You know, like for instance, between Umuleri and Aguleri uh, land disputes. Are you saying to me that this can't be a land dispute like the governor called it? You are saying it's more than this. Is that what you're saying to me? Well, we, we, we don't know about that. But what we see is that Christians are being killed. And no, whoever... Uh, no, hang on a minute, sir. You don't know about that. You're saying Christians are being killed. That's what you're specific about. Yes. But they are saying this is a result of another land issue there. So when there's a land breakout, Christians could be killed because their prevalence in, in southern Kaduna 
and some other areas. But is it necessarily a direct attack, you know, on Christians? And I'm using this because you said the word genocide. And that's why I had to, you know, go through the stress of rereading it on air, the meaning of genocide. So what you're saying is there's no land dispute, but Christians will just go, they just went out to attack Christians. There is no land dispute in Southern Kaduna. now. Everybody knows where each of them belongs to. So it is not a matter of land dispute, no. The, what is going on in Southern Kaduna is trying to eliminate people who are in Southern Kaduna who are Christian. And that is what we are saying. Well, Bishop, um, the governor of uh, Kaduna State, when we had this uh, uh, incident between July and uh, June and July, he decided to call a security meeting that was attended by various stakeholders. And he said the state government uh, is prepared to look at the lingering issues, whatever they may be, uh, resulting in uh, the conflicts in Southern Cardinal, and that the government will take a look at the uh, 1992 uh, report by the Judicial Commission of Inquiry on Zango Kataf, and that the state would issue a white paper on that. Well, what I don't understand in that regard is why it has to take 28 years to suddenly remember that there was once a judicial commission of inquiry that looked into conflicts in southern Kaduna. And then third, he says there is in place a Kaduna State Peace Commission. Now, does this give you some kind of assurance that now at last uh, government is willing to look into this matter? I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the commander of Operation Civil uh, was also at that meeting, uh, Major General Konkwo, and he was saying that, look, this is a matter of criminality, not ethnic cleansing or, or religious genocide, and that the military is also prepared uh, to wade into the matter. Do, do, you, do you feel reassured that at least uh, for once? Uh, well, we, you know, we cannot say we, are, we, can, we can feel reassured at this level until the killing stop, because the people that are killing other people are not ghosts. And if governor has said he's going to do all those, how many months would that take? And what we are saying is, people who are killing others, where are they? Have any of them been arrested? Have any of them been apprehended? And have any of them been prosecuted? So if they want to come out with any white paper or whatever paper, let them come out with it quick and let the killing going on in Southern Kaduna stop. That is our own message. We don't want to lose anybody again, not even one soul, because soul belongs to God. And they are dying, they are crying. We are crying as a church because we are helpless. The only hope that we have is God. The promises they have made, they are failed woefully. And that is what we are saying to the world. Let the killing stop and let our people have their life to live again. Let us be reassured that they will stop it tomorrow, even today. So we enough for just organizing meetings that is not bringing out anything. People are dying every day. Blood of the innocent is crying, and we are crying as a child. And we are saying enough is enough. Uh, you know, let's talk about more engagement. Uh, and at the community level, the traditional rulers and even the, tr the religious leaders at that level um, what is their role in all of this? Are you having engagements with them? And let's talk about the role of the people as well, because sometimes, you know, we hear that these attacks are known beforehand. So, and sometimes we're also told the perpetrators are not, you know, strangers. So do you think that even the people themselves, the traditional rulers at the community level, the religious leaders at the community level are playing their roles? Or do you find that there's a sense of complicity? Well, for us, the leaders are doing their best from our side, and they are engaging with the governments in discussing some of these things. But the result we get is that there is no cooperation. And before you know it, they will come again, they will kill them. They will come again, they will kill them. They will come again, they will kill them. So there is no way we want to believe that government cannot identify criminals. They cannot apprehend criminals. And like I said earlier on, before you can kill 40 people, it will take some time. Before you can burn down houses of people, it will take some minutes or some hours. And that will happen. Um, uh, nobody will arrest anybody, and they will go scot-free every time they come. 
So that is the point we are saying. People that we have on ground, we have bishops in Zaria, we have bishops in Kaduna, they engage them whenever they invite them. We have president, chairman of Khan in Kaduna State. Anytime they invite them, they go to attend meetings. But what is the outcome of those meetings? Nothing is coming out of it. The next thing they will hear in the night, they have killed our people again. The next thing, the following day, they have killed people again. Pastors are not soldiers. They are not to carry guns. They don't have guns to defend themselves. But what we are saying is, whatever engagement, whatever arrangement, whatever measure the government wants to put in place has to be done, and the killing must stop. We don't have any other language at this time. And until killing stops, we are not going to keep quiet. We we'll continue to shout it. Well, we are going well, to... Bishop, sorry to interrupt you. If the killings do not stop, then what's the option that is available? Some people are saying Nigerian Christians should also take up arms and fight back. Are no. you in support of that? No, 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 no. We, we don't take arms and fight back. We have somebody that will fight our battle for us, and that is God. And by the time we will continue to pray for, to him, he's going to deliver us. Because what we have seen is that our government has failed us, both at the federal level and at the state level of Kaduna. So we will call on God. It's God that will fight that battle for us. But if anybody believes they will eliminate Christians, it is a lie. The blood of the matter will become the seed of the church. No matter what they do, Christianity will continue to spread. And God will fight that battle for us because it says to us, that was 14, 14, the battle belongs to me. I will fight for your battle and you will hold your peace. But for us, as long as we live, we will continue to let the world know that government of Nigeria have failed people in Kaduna South and government of Kaduna State have failed the Southern Kaduna people and the Christian. And we will not stop saying that. All right. So the way forward for you will be prayers, prayers, prayers. And hopefully all of this will stop, right? Yes, we will pray. And we also will cry out to international community. There are people that will also come to our aid. They will engage the government of Nigeria in serious talk. And they must be alive to their responsibility. They cannot continue to look the other way when people are being maimed, when people are being killed. Uh, can, can, can you measure like some of those bodies that you will, you will call it to engage the government of the country? Oh, we have the United Nations. Okay. They should be able to do something. We have the African Union. They should be able to do something. And yeah. that is why they are put together. So for them to keep quiet at this time is unbelievable. So they must talk and they must engage the Nigerian government that they must be alive well, to their responsibilities. Thank you, thank you Bishop.